Hello everyone, welcome to my YouTube channel. This video is going to be a discussion of the best players in each position within the LPL that I recorded on the 1st of April before the LPL playoffs began. It's about 25 minutes, just a discussion of how I ranked the players, what my criteria was, as well as basically why some lists are shorter than others, why some lists are longer than others, and then just uh, round, rounding it out at the end. So we're going to start with the criteria. We've gone through these before. Uh, basically, I'm looking for fighting, which is skirmishing, team fighting, lane trading, anything like that. Well, 2v2 is more, more like any all-in situation that involves like two or more champions uh, on, on each team. And I'm looking for mechanics and approach, which is something that I've also called visualization. Early laning, which is wave management and trade windows, so when you take trades when you can, and if the trades are good. Side laning, so this is obviously imperfectly measured just because I don't have pro views of everything and everyone, and I don't have time to watch those either, so it's going to be based somewhat selectively on what I've seen. Side laning, which is just like 1v1ing, understanding when to fog, when to be visible, how to use your pressure and windows in mid-game, and then tempo. Uh, windows, resets, all these factors. Jungle, the only difference is you have pathing and fog usage, which pathing has more to do with like optimizing for taking into account lanes. Uh, fog usage has more to do with like, are you able to kind of play with vision well as a jungler and exert pressure that way? And then fighting is basically mechanics, approach, early laning, side laning tempo. Uh, I think a slight thing to be noted is that I think side laning is more important for top, but also really important for mid. Um, and then I think it's, it's removed from AD, but sometimes side laning will factor in. But these are mostly the things that you'll rate AD on. They're kind of the dumb rule. And then support is has vision control. So if a team has terrible vision control, we blame it on the support, even if it's not the support's fault. Now, uh, let's break down, ladies and gentlemen, into our first role. We need more tempo. Yeah, I agree. We don't have enough tempo in these criteria. Let's break down into our first role which ended up being top lane. So as you can see here, there are only eight top laners rated. I would have an initial list of top laners. My initial list of top laners was actually nine. If I felt like these were not, like these top laners were not actually even enough or vying to be some of the best tops in the league, then they should deserve to be rated. They're, they're not worth my time, you know? And then based off of the metrics that I have, I, I did scores of one to 10. And these are the ones that are here. So if we break specifically down, first of all, we're going to do our very scuffed award show. Officially the best team player, top laner in the LPL. Hooray. <laughs> nice. Highlight reel. <laughs> the reason why Shahu was rated first is because you wouldn't normally think of Shahu being someone who is the best top laner in LPL. I have greatly criticized his ability to manipulate his wave in relation to his jungler, specifically in the early game. But in all the other metrics and criteria we look at, he rates very highly in fights, uh, in how he fights, like both mechanics and approach. Rates very highly in trades, so not necessarily wave managed, but how to trade with his champion, and very high in side laning and tempo. So that is why he ended up being the best. Actually, we need a more hype song for this, because the, the music has to do all of the work, as you can tell, for the hype here. But that's the reason why Shahu ended up having the rating that he did. I think in terms of if you're just talking about lane laning, direct early laning, these three are very, very good. The reason why Naguri ended up getting docked points, because I would say halfway through the split, Naguri would have been the best. 
is because I think his understanding of wave manipulation uh, actually really suffered when Beitron was playing. And we've talked a little bit about the, on stream about how this could be to do with the fact that maybe Naguri is over-reliant on uh, his jungler telling him where the enemy jungler is going to be. Yeah, Flandra is 8th, but as we said, that just means that there are 8 really good top laners in LPL. We didn't bother to rate non-really good top laners in LPL, so Flandra is just like the 8th really good top laner. <clears throat> ben, I think, has some really troll wave management, and sometimes his fighting is bad, like particularly in flank scenarios, and his side laning is not quite there. But I think his, uh, he has like the best understanding of trading in lane. And his mechanics are really nice. Really nice. Um, the Shy, I think it's actually really similar to Bin. Um, he sort of forces the team to... Like the, the jungler has to adapt to the way he plays because he doesn't change. I think this is the same for Bin in terms of the way he's going to, to play the, the wave. He'll always take a, a favorable trade window. There's one... Where the shy is lower is I think he got punished more than Ben this, this season. Um, and because like the, the way that his jungler had to play was so glaring. Like Shun's greatest strength as his jungler is definitely his ability to understand pathing. And we see Shun just look way worse because of the way he has to play with the shy. 369 is here. I think 369 does almost all of the qualities that we talked about well, but very inconsistently. We don't have like a consistent stream of 369 being the best at anything. I would say Breathe is somewhat similar, but Breathe definitely rates lower in laning than pretty much anyone else here. But his his fighting tends to be very strong, like his mechanics and, and overall uh, approach of visualization. Flaunted has just looked like shit. Like, that's the, the big thing is I think he was playing very well at the start of the season, but he's like starting wrong skill orders, um, laning like a s just really poorly. Even when I'm trying to find good, because he used to be the top laner I'd go to for flanks, when I try to find good clips of him flanking, it's just not there. So while I think he's very good at a lot of things, he's taken a huge nosedive. So I tried to have more of a recency bias because this list should be more about how I expect these top laners to look going into playoffs. And that's why there's like a heavy recency bias here. Anyway, that is top lane. Drum roll please, ladies and gentlemen, as we get into jungle. The uh, jungler that I have selected is Wei. So there is an absolutely heavy, uh, wow, 2x speed. There's an absolutely heavy RNG bias here. You may have noticed it's it's huge, it's gigantic. I actually seriously thought it would be Karsa. I'm gonna be really honest. I actually, like going back over these games, thought that it would be Karsa. And I will explain to you why I thought that. The reason why I thought that I would pick the number one jungler would end up being Karsa is because I think that he really understands kind of the flow between laners and just his own his own tempo really well. Mm, sorry, I gotta close this one too early. He really understands uh, the flow of his tempo really well. The reason why I ended up punishing him was tempo. Just straight up. Um, so these, these scores ended up being extremely close. If we look at the criteria again, these scores ended up being very close in almost every category. And in fact, Carso was higher on Pathing and fog usage, which you can argue are more important than tempo and fighting. But I had fighting and tempo being harder for Wim. So if you're talking strictly about tools a jungler should have, this is what you should talk about. And then you'd rate Cursor higher than Wei. But because I... Jungle ended up scoring very weird, because I ended up saying fog usage was two-thirds as important as fighting and pathing. And tempo was half as important as the others. So even though it was like, Wei's tempo was just really good and Karsus was just pretty bad. Particularly in mid game. 
So this is like mid-game tempo in particular, and passing is, is just taking into account like individual domo tempo. Thank you for subscribing once again, Tashraka GM. Welcome back, welcome back. I probably... Thank you, I actually don't know that. Maybe we will test it eventually, but probably not, not for this one. So that's why it ended up be looking like that. I have SFM on three. His tempo is really whack, but he's good at a lot of the other things. Kanavi, again, I was very surprised, but I think the reason why Kanavi is here is he gets like, the way I rated it, he's a little bit boosted by Zoom. Because I was trying to think, what is a good way that junglers express good pathing? And right now, it's mostly you clear your camps and you coordinate with your jungle on the right time to execute a knife. That's, that's like the expression of pathing. Or you can pull off cheeses without getting punished based on where your landers are positioned. I feel like Kanavi actually does that really well. So that's why he's here. JJ is like the master of cheese pathing. Honestly, if I had to pick one, like he'll give up his, he'll, he'll give entire top side to, to dive, right? And they'll, they'll, they'll execute plays like that. Bo, I think his pathing is just like pretty decent, uh, his fight, but his main thing was like fighting and mechanics. Beishong ended up a lot lower th than I thought he would. And I make the window smaller so it's easier for us to read. Sure. Uh, do you mean smaller or larger? Is that better? Maybe? Okay. So, Beishong, I think the reason why Beishong is like this is because I realized watching his VODs, he plays frontline champs like really badly. And he made a lot of really weird decisions towards the end of the split, which was, you know, not recalling and then going for invades that weren't real, um, not reacting well to invades against him. And they kind of lost how they normally played their games, which was like looking for bot dives to go for really kind of strange Hail Mary jungle invades. So Beishong lost a lot of points due to recency bias. Good night, everyone. And then Meteor ended up creeping up on me a bit. I think this one's a bit controversial, especially since he's over Loyan, which I think he has gotten a lot of praise. My biggest problem with Leon is he doesn't really understand the invisible pressure, right? So his fog usage is really poor. He basically just runs at you down mid, and that's the, the nuance of his team fighting. Like there's almost zero nuance to the way he mechanically plays fights, which doesn't really get punished in the current meta. Um, thank you for the follow, Takimon. So even though a lot of people have been praising Loyan, and I think a lot of the stuff that he gets is just stuff that's like people inting into him. So I definitely think he deserves to be on this list, right? I, like I said, I don't, don't rate players who don't deserve to be on this list. I am not quite there on the hype. And, and again, Shun, maybe there's a world where Shun is on this list if he doesn't have the shy on his team. <laughs> I don't know why this is called the hype playlist, but we're going with it. Okay, guys, drum roll, please. Mid lane. So this is the one world that I had didn't rate at all on stream. I ended up with rookie in first, and I think honestly the reason why rookie ends up being first is because he is probably the best laner in LPL. It's honestly just that simple. Like, just straight up. Uh, when you watch her, his pro view, even when enemy mids are, are trolling, like, he's the one who's rarely making mistakes. He's very consistently p manipulating the wave w in the position that he wants it to be or that it's beneficial for his jungler if his jungler wants to fight for crab. Um, there's just very few 
Like, he definitely makes mistakes. I've seen situations where he makes mistakes, but compared to, to players like... Well we'll, well, we'll talk about it in a sec. Compared to players on this list, <laughs> who I may or may not be highlighting right now, who have absolutely zero nuance to how they lane, um, it's pretty insane. I think Knight is probably the second best laner, but he had a lot of mis-execution in team fighting this season that knocked him quite a bit. Fofo and Doinby, like pretty much hands down, if you look at the way that, that fights are played, I would always want to have these, these players. Um, they played fights consistently really well. Um, it was really nice. And obviously Doinby has a more limited champ pool, but he really knows how to execute his, his champs and he'll win fights off of flanks like so often. Maybe Doinby should switch to top as well. But the biggest thing that makes uh, Doinby get a high rating is his window understanding is so good. Like the way he plays mid game and, and how he uses his windows early game as well. What's my problem with Mole? My problem with Mole is that I feel like you start getting lower on this list and as soon as you get to scouts, there's the clear, the defined nature of the strengths of these mid laners. It's just not there. You know, you have like really, really huge flashes of build of brilliance in certain areas, like Yagao and Scout, I think. And Yagao's windows are, are really strong. Scout, I think, has like some very, very good exceptional team fights. But then he'll just int other times, and Yagao's like laning is at, at times borderline atrocious. And then Mole, I feel like there, there are so many games where I can't tell if he's tilted or what's going on. He'll get caught out or he'll like brain off, push the lane for second wave when it doesn't actually help. Or when it's actually not the best thing to do. They'll lose trades for no reason. I think probably some people are surprised I rated him over Kryon. I was surprised that a lot of these mids came out over Kryon because I feel like Kryon at least understands the fundamentals of early laning and is executing this well, but he just doesn't have like those moments where it's like, yeah, this guy is, he's just carrying the game, you know? Like I never feel like Kryon is the reason why RNG won. I just, I never feel like Kryon is the reason RNG won. So Kryon ends up being uh, like that. And then Angel is here because his side laning is good. <laughs> That's literally it. Uh, his his laning is legit troll. Like he just uses cooldowns because they're up. I swear, that's like the thing that that's his thought process. It's pretty crazy. And then actually, Uniboy made it on the list purely because I feel like he brute forces so many team fights. But yeah, I, I will either rate the top tens in a position, or I will not rate players if they don't deserve to be considered like a top mid laner. So jungle by this by this token, jungle and mid are the most stacked roles in LPL. Uh, the last two roles, there are fewer players than 10 on the list. So now we will get into 80 carries. It is probably to no one's surprise that the top rated 80 carry is Viper. I just literally think that if you don't think this guy is potentially not the best performing player in the LPL right now, you're probably just trolling. Uh, the way this guy is playing fights and almost every skirmish is just like, you watch it and he's thinking about so many factors that other AD carries don't think about. Like cooldowns, um, the targeting, he, this guy is just, there are so many moments where it's like, wow. I didn't see that angle, you know? He's fucking nuts. How many ADs that I rated? Well, if you watch the stream, you, you have an idea. It's not going to be a surprise to you. I rated five. I ended up really surprised by how high Huang Feng was. And I think it's just because these three end up trolling lane or just like straight up trolling so many times. Whereas Huang Feng, like, he doesn't really hit the high highs of anyone, 
but he does his goddamn job and he doesn't make horrendous mistakes whereas these guys will pop off but they will sometimes also make horrendous mistakes So yeah, no Gala. Uh, Gala is the only RNG player that did not end up ranked. Spoiler. Did I end up ranking? I ranked every EDG player. EDG is the only team, I think, where I ranked every player. Unless you count me rating Bo as ranking every FPX player. So, I, I think ADC is by far the most shallow role in OPL right now. So I could only justify having five. Yes, a, a man of culture, of course, Huan Feng. I was surprised when I was looking at the criteria that Huan Feng ended up being like rated this high, but I just think again, the AD pool is so tragic. Happens. All right. Hello, hello. So now we're moving on to the most important role in the entire video game, as everyone knows. The absolute best role, the only role that is important to actually win, because if you are a top team, it is assumed you have competent players in every position. At that point, the best support will win the goddamn game. That is my firm belief, that if you have like relatively e even Distribution of skill, support ends up being the most important role in the game. In terms of particularly visualization and setting up plays and just dictating how the map goes, because support has so much power actually, so much like hidden power. <clears throat> so assuming that all of your laners, all of your players are not just sitting there drooling on the keyboard ineffectually, Support is the most OP role. <sighs> so. I'm sure all of you will be shocked. To see who I picked. Much shock, very awe. Yeah, I picked I picked chance. No. Um obviously the, the person I picked for support was Ming. Uh, the thing there's definitely an argument to make that Ming is the MVP of LPL. I do not make that argument, but I think it's a reasonable one. And I think it's just because of the factor that I, that I said. Um, and that's more or less just he is constantly finding the perfect angles so that the rest of his team doesn't necessarily have to think too much about fights. Um, I, I think that there is like the, the, the role that I definitely regret the most is jungle. So I'll just expand it out. There's no point in hiding it now. We've the suspense is broken. Um, I think honestly the role that I feel the weirdest about still is jungle. And I think there is an argument to be made for Carso number one. But even if Carso is number one, Wei Ming would still be just the best mid jungle duo and jungle support duo in LPL and that's really powerful. Because then you have so much control and setup in the early game and so much control and setup in the late game with them as a, a duo. So even though I feel like RNG wouldn't win with any other player in their top lane, 
and that's why I would say Shahu's MVP. I think that they definitely don't win if their jungle support is anything but, like, god tier. <clears throat> Uh, Teen was kind of Teen was in the top ten. Top ten was really weird. I I ended up like having Shousey here and being like, "What the fuck, man? This is so tragic." And then just getting rid of the the bottom five. Um, but I think I'm pretty happy with this this list. I think you can argue Crisp or Mako in seconds. But I think Crisp definitely has more agency within FBX games and is more important to how they succeed. In particular, I think Crisp's execution has been more consistent in terms of fights and like when he's getting engages and flanks. Like Mako has been really weird. Sometimes he just completely misses his combos or gets caught out and dies. Breathe is still too high. I uh, hope you enjoyed that. I know it was basically just taken straight from Twitch and slightly edited, but not not really edited much. So there's a lot of meat. Ah, checking the, the the Twitter, the Twitch stream, the the chat, like over the wall with the cell phone. I'm a very articulate person, as you can tell from watching this basically live and not edited. If you enjoyed it, please follow me on YouTube and Twitch as well. And I'll try to see what other segment content I can do from streams, probably some VOD reviews, other things along those lines. Uh, have a great day.